the sun is shining, which means it's exam time again. Yes. I thought uh, it would be a good opportunity for me and Reen just to have a conversation about exam preparation, mm -hmm. key things, what to expect and how mm -hmm. to prepare for it. Yeah, so, so I suppose the first thing to think about was what to expect when you um, prepare into an exam, what's expected uh, from you in an exam then? Right, because a lot of people kind of get very worried and concerned yeah. about what an exam might be. Yeah. Um, whether or not the questions they'll be able to answer them. I think the key thing to remember about an exam is we're not trying to trick you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't set you questions that you've not done in class that yeah. haven't been dealt with in seminars. Um, so don't feel like you've got to um, worry about the exams, uh, the there being questions there that you don't know how to answer. Yeah. The key thing is about preparation, making sure you prepare yeah. the right material yeah. well. And to go back over what you've done in lectures and seminars, the reading and the preparation you've done, and sort of focus on certain areas that you feel sort of confident in, that you can uh, prepare those well for the uh, exam, I suppose. Right, so yeah, yeah. so go, go to the lectures. I mean, you might take a tranche of three lectures yeah. um, that you particularly feel particularly strong, um, mm. you know, which, which you're particularly uh, interested in, which you yeah. felt you did particularly well on, yeah. understood well, and yeah. take them down, break them down into their different um, yeah. sort of... Um, subject areas. Yeah. Key thing as well is to think about you know what kind of um, aspects of that topic which might come up which yeah. might be useful. Um, I always say you know the most important thing is to go into an exam with as much yeah. of a sort of and many tools as possible yeah. to answer questions. And to think again what are the main questions on each of the different topics so in a way you can start to think about what type of questions you will have in an exam so um, think of the main issues regarding every aspect of every um, development um, that you're looking at in your module. And as, was, and as you were saying, so it's not there to trick you, I suppose what the exam there is trying to test you, not to, not even to test your knowledge either, it's there to, to test your ability to, to discuss, to think about these aspects for yourself. So, it's, so I suppose that's important as well when you go into the exam, not just to list these are the things I know. Exactly, about. I think a lot of people feel like, you know, exam is all about recall. Yeah. So, you know, you go in with your facts, your figures, your dates, your times, your people, yeah. um, and then that's enough. Well, actually, it's just the same as if you were writing an essay. It's all yeah. about the connections that you can make. Yes. So, I mean, one thing I always used to do was have a good set of conversations yes, with other, other, other students, um, even um, with family members, mm. trying to just, you know, make sure that you can make those connections, that you know those yes. connections, you know. Think about what is the political, the cultural, the social, the economic aspects of this. You know, which part of that might end up being the most important in this question. Yes, definitely. And think broadly and bring in even sort of um, things that might have, you might have come across in other modules. Uh, it's good as well as you know, sort of um, if you come across some concepts, some ideas in other modules, you can bring into this module and to think across uh, across the whole discipline. Absolutely. Yeah. If you want to bring in some gender analysis from yeah. your making yeah. history, or if you want to bring in some a Marxist perspective, yeah. then feel free. And I think that's a good point as well. I suppose um, it's easy to think about making history as a standalone module. You, you look at the histori historiography there and then you don't bring it into um, other modules. But the whole point is to start thinking about historiography, start thinking about the way that historians deal with their topics. And then it's important then to bring that into your, your own discussions as well as in, in all the different modules. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've, you know, that, that's, what, that's, what we do that, about, that's yeah. why we do that module at all, is so yeah. that you have it in your arsenal of yeah. stuff to take into the exams. Yeah. Um, a lot of people do talk about historiography. Yeah. Yeah. What, what should you think about when you think, when, in terms of historiography mm -hmm. when you're preparing for an exam? Yeah. Well, so when you're preparing, when you're reading, um, for example, when you're doing your own research for your exams, it's important to... Not only to start thinking about, the, well, what are the facts being presented here? How do I bring that into my exam? But also start thinking, well, what are the different ideas that historians have here? Trying to see some, um, what are the differences between the different historians uh, you are reading? Think about their ideas, note down their ideas um, as, as, you, as you go along. Exactly. And, yeah. and lots of the questions as well, I suppose, are, uh, are based on these debates between historians. Um, so thinking about the, go back, look over past papers and so on. Um, it's a good way of thinking about what type of questions will come up. And thinking, well, and then you can test yourself from these past papers, well, what do I know about the historiography of, of this question? How have st historians um, discussed this particular question in the past? And that will help you then to think about, when it comes to the exam, how to discuss the historiography uh, when it comes to that specific exam. Yeah, I mean, you, can, you might even go as far as to actually organise your vision around the historiography, yes, you can, you know, yeah. which of the debates, the core debates, and, and yeah. organise you know, these 
and these other sort of nuts and bolts stuff, yeah. the facts and figures around those debates, yes. around yeah. those, so that again you're making those connections, you can yeah. go into the exam with that arsenal well, well yeah. equipped. Yeah. And also I suppose to, not just to think, well, these are what historians have said about this, you need to bring your own viewpoints into it as well. You need to be think originally about the topic yourself. So uh, you might have um, you have read what some historians have said. You might disagree. You bring in your own analysis, your own evidence, uh, and you might want to contrast that against some of the views uh, of historians. And by using your knowledge of historiography, you can sort of enrich your debate with other historians. Right. That that's very much if you look at the marking criteria. Yeah. And again, a, a really important thing is to do that. Definitely. Is to go to yeah. marking criteria and really try and understand well, what is the difference between yes. passing an exam and doing really well in an exam. Yeah. Really important. And originality is there. I mean. Is is a lot of a lot of students get quite sort of you know mystified by that word originality? I mean, what what do you think that word means when we when we're looking at, at these exams once they've been submitted? I think it's often a problem um, when you're revising or when you're writing your answers just to fall back on um, lecture notes to fall back on what you've read in lectures. So part of that has been making sure that you do your own research. Uh, and bring things in that, are, uh, that aren't part of the lectures or part of the seminars, but things you've read yourself. But also I think part of the process is to stop, not just get all this information into you, but to start and analyse and think about this information before you reach the, the exam. So you've already developed some of your, your own ideas uh, about these topics before you then even reach the exam itself. Yeah, you're really showing that kind of extra level of insight and you understanding, are, yes. showing that you've not just, you know, turned up to lectures and then mm. gone away again and now you're returning to them. Mm. Um, you know, the classic is seeing almost your own lecture notes yes, yeah. appearing in exams, which yeah. is always very disconcerting. Yeah. And you, you, know, you know when it's happening, you know. Of course, because you gave the lecture. lecture. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's really about showing that you've gone away, you've yeah. done the seminar readings, you've gone beyond that, you've read beyond that, and you yeah. know you have a much broader understanding of how the course operates and the intercollective yeah. um, elements of it. And I think what, another thing we stand out, we haven't really discussed, is the use of primary sources. Mm. Um, and something which can really help you and make you stand out in your paper, in your uh, in your answer, if you not only can just mention primary sources, but if you've obviously shown some awareness of them, if you've looked at some primary sources and used them as part of your answer, um, again showing your own originality uh, that you are looking at these things yeah. yourself. You're not just discussing things from the work of other historians. But you've looked at these at primary source, you've done this research for yourself as well. And that really makes you stand out, I think, when you are uh, for the marker then you Absolutely, are yeah. It's all about trying to distance just make make your essay distinctive and yes. individual yes. and personal whilst at the same yeah. time hitting yeah. all the right. Yeah. Uh, other things as well, think about the marking scheme, and again to emphasize how important it is, is um, one of the things that comes out often as well is structure. Um, and it's very important that you have some sort of structure to your answer as well. Um, and that's the thing, the thought part of that is to plan, so to take the first few minutes um, uh, of your um, time in the exam, uh, examination room, preparing your answer, think, thinking about what are the main arguments you want to make, what are the you know, historians you want to mention, which are the primary sources you want to uh, include there, and then to make sure you have a proper structured answer there, which really goes to the root of the question. Um, and it's worth looking at the question itself and sort of analysing the question, reading it carefully to make sure there's some, is there something hidden there uh, that you might want to think about and uh, refer to uh, in your answer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's much better just to take a few minutes yes. yeah. just to make sure that you are giving everything you've got to yes. that question. You yes. Know? If there's often there's, you, you kind of you, you might have an initial panic when you realise that yeah. that's not quite how you'd mm. envisage that question coming up, but when it and you just take a step back yes. and look at yeah. it again, you start to realise actually you know a lot more about that topic yes. than, you, than yeah. you initially thought, yeah. um, and you can bring in all sorts yeah. of interesting things. Yes, and that's what's important, bringing in the main, bringing all this information, the stories, some, in some insight things you've been thinking about, and to structure them uh, in a way that will answer the question, um, and that really will sort of really enrich your, your answer and give that originality we were mentioning to your answer. Good, fantastic. Well, good luck with the okay, exams. Good luck. And, uh, I'll leave it there.